This is the video presentation of Percent Moisture, analytical services method number two. Percent Moisture, often referred to as loss on drying, is a proximate analysis test that gravimetrically determines the moisture content of a sample by drying it in a convection oven or forced air oven. The percent moisture method described here is based on these official methods. The official methods we refer to are suitable for materials such as meat, animal feed, cheese, butter, peanuts, and whole nuts, and soybeans. Before attempting this technique, it is mandatory to read the test method in its entirety. This presentation is simply an overview or a summary of percent moisture. The good laboratory practices associated with safety and personal protective equipment represented in this video are simply the safety requirements of the FAPC Analytical Services Laboratories. Furthermore, all samples received by analytical services are considered to be for testing purposes only and not for human consumption. Therefore, food safety and handling procedures do not apply. We urge you to determine what specific good laboratory practices and particular safety requirements are necessary for your own applications. Some of the recommended guidelines for good laboratory practices include take measures to maintain the integrity of the samples throughout the process by limiting exposure to air and non-suitable storage temperatures, wearing gloves when handling samples and items associated with the test to prevent cross-contamination, oil, moisture, or any other material on bare hands can affect the sample integrity, thus resulting in inaccurate data. Keep samples clearly labeled from preparation to disposal. Record observations at the time that they are made. Exercise safety precautions at all times by using the specific safety supplies listed in the method. The necessary supplies for percent moisture are ceramic crucibles or aluminum pans, a wax pencil or a permanent marker, Fisher isotemp drying oven or equivalent, weighing spatulas, analytical balance, desiccator with dry right, heat resistant gloves, oven tongs, latex gloves, safety glasses, timer, lab coat. Although there are no standards or reagents required for this analysis, the use of a controlled sample or a standard reference material is strongly recommended. The first variable that must be considered is whether or not the sample will be analyzed for percent ash following the moisture analysis. This will determine the type of drying container that will be used. If the percent moisture sample will also be analyzed for ash, the sample will be weighed in a ceramic crucible. If not, the moisture sample may be weighed in an aluminum pan. The aluminum pans are disposable. The type of sample to be analyzed for percent moisture will determine the analysis conditions. The specific analysis conditions must be selected according to the official method that better suits the sample matrix. Here is a chart with the method applications and test condition variables. Note that the sample type will dictate the amount of sample that will be weighed, the oven temperature setting, and the length of time the sample will remain in the oven. Temperatures, times, and sample weights may be varied, if necessary, to correspond with similar official methods better suited for the sample matrix. Before a sample is analyzed, it must be properly prepared so that an accurate test result can be obtained. This is achieved by homogenizing the sample. Homogenization ensures that all of the sample material will be of consistent content throughout and suitable for analysis. For details, please refer to preparation of test samples Analytical services method number one. It is recommended that all samples be analyzed in duplicate or triplicate for accuracy and statistical analysis. Turn on the oven. Hold the setting button and adjust the temperature setting according to the sample type requirement. Allow the oven to reach the set temperature. If the ceramic crucibles have been selected as the appropriate drying container because the same samples will be used for ash analysis, all crucibles should have an ID number inscribed on the bottom and must be placed in the heated drying oven for at least 15 minutes. Use tongs to remove the crucibles from the oven and allow them to cool to room temperature in a desiccator under vacuum for at least 15 minutes. If the aluminum pans have been selected as the appropriate sample container, use a wax pencil or a permanent marker to mark each pan with a unique ID number. Wax pencil is preferable because it is less likely to fade when heated. Before weighing samples, verify that they have reached room temperature. Otherwise, the measured weight will be inaccurate. 
making the percent moisture value incorrect. Tear the analytical balance and use gloves or tongs to place a weighing container on the balance. Immediately record the container ID and its weight. With the weighing container still on the balance, tear the balance. Use the chart to determine the amount of sample to be weighed. Use a spatula to weigh the appropriate amount of sample according to the chart for the sample conditions. Immediately record the sample weight with the previously obtained container ID and the container weight. Repeat the weighing steps until all of the samples are weighed in duplicate or triplicate. For each replicate, there should be a drying container ID, an empty container weight, and a sample weight. Place all the containers in the heated drying oven. Immediately record the time the samples were placed in the oven. Refer to the chart of sample conditions once again to establish how long the samples should remain in the oven. Either set a timer or record the time when the samples must be removed from the oven. Many sample types, such as meat products, must remain in the oven 16 to 18 hours. In these cases, it is most practical to leave the samples drying overnight. At the end of the required time, use tongs to remove the samples from the oven and place them in a desiccator under vacuum to cool. Allow the samples to cool for a minimum of 30 minutes. Immediately record the time the samples were removed from the oven. Calculate the total drying time based on the time in and the time out to verify that the test method was followed accurately. After the samples have cooled for a minimum of 30 minutes, release the desiccator vacuum extremely slowly. Releasing the vacuum too rapidly may cause the containers to overturn or sample materials to be lost, and the resulting weight errors will cause inaccurate percent moisture results. Tear the analytical balance. Using tongs, remove one sample container from the desiccator and place it on the balance. Immediately replace the desiccator lid. Record the drying container ID and the weight of the dried sample and container. Continue the process until every dry container has been weighed and recorded. If aluminum pans were used for drying containers, they can be discarded. The first step in the percent moisture calculation is to determine the weight of the moisture removed from the sample. This is accomplished by subtracting the weight of the dried sample and weighing container from the combined weight of the undried sample and empty container. The final step in the percent moisture calculation divides the moisture weight by the sample weight and multiplies the value by 100 to convert it to percent. As an alternative to manual calculations, an Excel spreadsheet may be used. Here is an example of what a spreadsheet should look like. The sample IDs, container IDs, and weights can be entered as they are observed. With the correct calculation cells set up in advance, the calculation is completely automated and occurs as data is entered. Calculate the average of the replicates from the percent moisture results. This will be the reported result. For the statistical analysis of the replicates analyzed, calculate the percent relative standard deviation, percent RSD. The percent RSD should not exceed plus or minus 5%. When applicable, the measurement uncertainty should be included with the result.